I love dragons, especially in video games. Even when it's a half-assed mechanics, I still find it very interesting. Which leads me to finding out about Dragon's Dogma. I've heard about the game before, but never really gave it a chance. After all, who's gonna test out the 100 Skyrim mods on my PC? With the Dragon's Dogma 2 release being a bit of a stinker, I want to check out the previous game first. What I didn't expect, however, was to be blown away by one of the most unique and immersive RPGs ever made. If you're interested in the franchise but have no idea what it feels like to play Dragon's Dogma, let's explore the dreamy world of Grand Seas together. And as always, thank you for watching. Dragon's Dogma has a very simple premise. One day the big bad dragon shows up and steals our heart, and now we must head out to get it back. That's pretty much it. A fantasy setting doesn't get any simpler than that, but in a way, this opening serves as the perfect preview for the experience of playing the game. But before we get into the fun stuff, there are some things you should keep in mind. Despite being designed as a western role-playing game, Dragon's Dogma didn't escape the JRPG curse. Recently, I was able to finish some older titles so my gaming sensibility has been tempered quite a lot, but I can absolutely see someone being overwhelmed by this menu. Brother, uh. What's that? This menu is designed for console, so browsing it on PC feels like I'm trying to fight with the game for control. There are windows upon windows, and you gotta be careful with your input. If you're like me and click things on impulse, there is a risk of discarding an item instead of using or moving it. And the worst thing is, there's no drag and drop. For skills and equipments, you must click on the slot for a pop-up menu at the bottom of the screen. But once you get over this hurdle of a menu, you gain access to so many cool mechanics. The next thing that could be weird for new players is the combat. Now you probably have seen a lot of videos about Dragon's Dogma combat, how there's no dodge rolling and pairing mechanics and positioning is important. That's all fine and good, but there's a small, crucial detail that basically decides whether or not you could enjoy this combat design. That is the sprint button. For the love of all that's holy, release the W key to stop sprinting. The game has a toggle sprint, but there's a slight delay on the input however. If you don't deliberately stop, you will sprint until your stamina is empty. And once you deplete your stamina, you're more cooked than a brisket in a YouTube short. There's a lot of things going on in every single combat encounter, it's almost impossible to keep an eye on your stamina. So make it a habit to tap the sprint button, reposition yourself, and then let go of the W button. Adopting this maneuver has made combat so much more manageable for me, no matter what class I play. The last point is to make sure to give out commands to your pawns so they move in unison with you. The capability of 2012 AIs rivals that of a career politician. These idiots will run headfirst into a monster double their levels with no hesitation. So if you need to, slam those commands, just like how you should slam the subscribe button. Now that we got the janky stuff out of the way, let's talk about the fun. I'm an avid fan of single player games. Immersion is very important to me. If I can feel like I'm a part of a world, that's all I need to get invested. And man did Dragon's Dogma do this well. The usual quest of the game goes like this. Someone needs me to either get them something, kill something, or escort them somewhere. Extremely simple task that can be summed up with a single sentence. In any other game, this would just fall flat on its face. You're not doing anything more than a digital chore. But it works out for Dragon's Dogma because despite the simple quest structure, there's next to no hand-holding. Many games always have this huge marker plastered directly onto the middle of the screen. A constant floating quest marker communicates a lot of things. First, it means that I can tunnel vision on that single quest marker and completely ignore the game. This goes directly against natural player exploration. And if a game is designed with random encounters in mind like Assassin's Creed, that's even worse. The second thing is that I no longer need to mentally engage the game. When I play Morrowind, I need to rely on the directions given to me to navigate the world. This means lining up the landscape with the journal's description. But in Skyrim, that floating marker does all the thinking for me. Oh, I need to find an ancient artifact? That's right there. How do I know that? Video game magic. We can go further, but for now, I hope you can see my point. Dragon's Dogma has a marker in the minimap at the bottom of the screen, which is about as non-intrusive as possible. And for some quests, there isn't even a marker. You just gotta go out there and explore. This very hands-off quest design is complemented by the vast beautiful world of Grand Seas. Outside of Casades, I can see the capital Grand Soren in the distance. Even from so far away, the structure is clearly visible. And once I reach it, the scale of it completely blew me away. The game does a fantastic job guiding the players through the world with these huge structures without being too pushy about it. Funny enough, Dragon's Dogma is the game that did the whole if you can see it, you can go to it and think the best for me. And the road leading to those structures don't feel boring. On the way to a location, it's almost guaranteed that there will be some huge monsters looking for a fight. They offer a great challenge, especially in the early game. But that's not the end of it. 
there's a day-night cycle that's more than just a cosmetic effect. At night, monsters and beasts increase in numbers, and they are way more dangerous. Some monsters only spawn at night too, making traveling after dark a challenge. This makes getting from point A to B incredibly intense. And while all of this is happening, the world of Grand Seas acts as the perfect backdrop. Even though there's not much variations in terms of biome, the environment looks gorgeous in all locations. Every little corner is teeming with life and full of soul. My favorite moments are when I stand atop some elevation and look down to a valley or the sea. There's a reason the game is confident enough to add a photo mode so you can share your cool moments with others. A hero is as epic as their adversary, and Dragon's Dogma offers some of the most formidable foes. Other games start off with small enemies and slowly allow you to progress. This one pits you against an ogre and a hydra in an opening hour. And just when you thought the game's done, it tosses a new enemy at you. There are ogres, cyclops, chimeras, liches, golems, and many more that I haven't seen yet. Cyclops is weak to lightning magic while ogres are vulnerable to staggers, chimeras and griffins can be burned easily and so on. All these monsters have different weaknesses and behaviors. Once you know all of this, the boss fights become much easier, but still not without challenge. Even if you know what to do, executing on the plan is a different matter. Enemies are volatile and unpredictable, and if you play a caster character like me, positioning and prediction is extremely important. I can still vividly remember my first time defeating an ogre in the ancient quarry. It was really late at night, all of my characters are used up and my party is lower than the employment rate of Gen Z, but alas the beast has fallen. I got 5000 XP from it and man it was the best 5000 XP ever. When you slay your first huge monster, it feels hella good. And just like the enemy system, the character progression is amazing. There's no scaling in Dragon's Dogma, each enemy has a locked level. This means in the early game, you can run into a brick wall and get your party wiped. For some, this is very frustrating, but this also makes grinding and leveling up so worth it. You can return to an extremely hard area 20 levels later and clean the mobs up with a single skill. Nothing motivates me more to get stronger and better gears than that feeling. As a mage, I only had access to some meager spells at the beginning, and in the mid game, I can cast something like this. Every level offers a huge boost of stat, health, and damage without any convoluted formula to complicate it. The progression has a very nice pace and at no point during the game did I feel like I wasted my time grinding for minimal gain. This coupled with a randomized loot system make each adventure so exciting, because at the end of a dungeon there will always be a nice reward. My only complaint, if you will, is that the grind can be quite tedious if you want to min-max the stat of your gears. The gear upgrade system is unique, as you can fully upgrade your gear if you have the materials. And surprise surprise, some materials cannot be bought. You must scour the map for the specific type of enemy and farm them, like any JRPG. Even then, you're not always lucky for the targeted material to drop. But again, unless you're 10 to 20 levels down and get destroyed by a single hit, stats don't really mean much, you do just fine. To close this off, let's talk about one of the most interesting features in gaming, the pawn system of Dragon's Dogma. Until today, I think the only feature that's as interesting as this is the nemesis system of Shadow of Mordor. After creating our character, we get the choice to customize our very own pawn. They're exactly like a player character, except they listen to our commands. This pawn will then be uploaded to the rift and is open to be hired by other players if you so choose. We can hire up to two pawns to make a four people party and there's no limit on what class we can have. The system allows such a nice range of party customization and make each playthrough very fun and unique. If our own pawn is hired by others, we can earn rift crystals which can be used to hire even better pawns or buy items from rift merchants. These are great consumables that will help turn the tide of a fight easily. Whenever I finish a quest, my main pawn learns certain key details of that quest. If someone hires him and haven't done that quest yet, my pawn will give them some hints about the location and strategy to progress. When I first read about it, I didn't know how to feel, but because of how well written the pawns are, these feels very natural. And the narrative acknowledges the pawns too, so it has another layer of immersion on top. But remember to use the command buttons very regularly, otherwise your pawns will run around like headless chickens. We can only put so much trust in AIs from 2012. After 40 hours, I can confidently say that Dragon's Dogma belongs in the rank of gaming classics. The gameplay and in general the entire experience is fantastic. Despite the simple story and some janky designs, Dragon's Dogma has some of the coolest boss fights in gaming. It's a nice blend of Dark Souls and Monster Hunter with some RPG sprinkled in, making it one of the most memorable gaming adventure I've ever had. I can only sincerely recommend this game to you. 
And with Dragon's Dogma 2 having some trouble with the launch, why not start with this one first to get a feel for it? Thank you for making it this far into the video. Never in my wildest dream have I thought I'd get over 100 subs, let alone 300. So thank you for watching, and bye!